Hi, this is Mr. Evans. This video is going to look at an essay that might come up on price elasticity of demand. The question I've set for myself um, relates to this portion of the specification here. Uh, AQA says that you need to know the value of the concepts of price and income elasticity of demand for marketing decision makers. So the question I've set for myself is um, this one. A business in a competitive market estimates the price elasticity of demand for the product to be 1.2. Discuss the extent to which this estimate is likely to be helpful in making marketing decisions. So this could be um, a 20, 24, 25 mark question, depending on whether it's AS or uh, A level. It could be assessed in both um, uh, in, in both examinations. Um, <clears throat> This is the descriptor of a level five answer. Um, I'm going to focus in this video on how I try and demonstrate analysis throughout, well developed and applied effectively to the context, considering a balanced range of the issues. So I'm going to be focusing predominantly on analysis in um, this video. So here is my checklist that I have got for what makes a good uh, evaluative essay. And I'm going to be focusing on Point four, I'm going to start each analytical paragraph at the point. And how do I use business terms and connectives to build an argument? So uh, let's just have a look at the question again. So the question here, I've uh, used a highlighter. It might be worth you just pausing the video here uh, and writing a quick plan for how you would approach this essay. And then we'll have a look at uh, my essay. Um, so I've picked out a few things from the question. So the first one is uh, the question is discuss the extent. So I know that this is a question where I'm being asked to come to a judgment or conclusion. Obviously, um, you would have the number of marks available as well to tell you that, but it's, uh, discuss indicates that I need a conclusion. Um, in terms of the context of the question, this is a business in a competitive market. So um, that's my context. It's a business in a competitive market with um, a price elasticity of 1.2. Now, because I know price elasticity, I've revised it. I know that means that I've got a price elastic product. And I need to explain why this estimate is going to be helpful in making marketing decisions. And because I need to come to a judgment with balance, I need to look at both sides of the argument and why it might not be helpful as well. So I did plan my essay before I wrote it, I haven't included the plan here, but um, let's just have a quick look at how I have uh, answered the question. So um, I've started off to explaining what price elasticity demand is. Uh, it estimates the responsiveness of consumer demand to changes in the price of a product. Such knowledge can be useful in terms of marketing decision making, particularly when setting price, but it is only an estimate and, there, and should therefore be treated with caution. So what I've done, I've explained to the examiner that I know exactly what price elasticity of demand is, and then I've signposted the, towards what my conclusion is going to be. Now, the examiner's reports keep on saying that uh, a good answer has been planned from the beginning, and this is basically my whole essay. It can be useful in terms of marketing decision making, particularly for set price, but as it's only an estimate, it should be treated with caution. That's basically my whole essay summarised in uh, the opening paragraph. So the first section of the essay here is going to look at why uh, this estimate of PED might be helpful in making marketing decisions. So I'm not going to focus on every single marketing decision. I've decided to focus in the first paragraph on price and in the second paragraph on promotion. Um, so, a business has estimated that consumers are highly, uh, a business that has estimated that consumers are highly responsive to changes in price as the PED estimate of 1.2 indicates, may, may find this information helpful when deciding on their pricing strategy. So I've highlighted this in yellow because this is the point that I'm going to develop in this paragraph. I'm say, telling the examiner that it might be helpful to know price elasticity of demand figures when we're going to choose our pricing strategy. If they were to cut prices by 10%, they would plan for demand for the product to rise by 12%. And 
Okay, it's a very simple calculation that I've used using the uh, estimate, and you can you can pretty much always do this as long as you know how to calculate price elasticity demand. Doing 10% is the easiest one to do, but this shows the examiner that you're using the figures that, that, that they've been given, and you're making a very basic uh, but useful calculation. Okay, so. Um, a business has estimated that consumers are highly responsive to changes in price, um, as the estimate of 1.2 indicates may find this information helpful when deciding on the pricing strategy. If they were to cut prices by 10%, they would plan for the demand for the product to rise by 12%. However, a rise in prices would see a proportionally large fall in sales and consequently revenue. Therefore, managers may decide to follow a penetration pricing strategy. What I've done is I've taken my point about why it might be useful for setting a pricing strategy. I've explained why it would be useful, okay? So cutting prices would see demand rise, rising prices would see sales fall, and therefore this could help them settle their pricing strategy. So that's one reason that knowledge of PED, this estimate, might be helpful. Um, I've moved on to a second paragraph because um, I'm changing subject. I'm going to look at why it might be helpful now for making decisions around promotion. Uh, the estimate of 1.2 is not very price elastic. So this is kind of my knowledge, the point that I'm making, um, that I might be able to make decisions around promotion. And I'm just interpreting the figures. Okay, it's not very price elastic. It's quite close to being inelastic, 0.9, 0.8. If the organisation were to improve the brand image to make consumers believe that the product is unique and there are no substitutes for it, it could make demand for the product less responsive to changes in price. So, okay, so I'm telling the examiner now that I know the factors that lead to a product being price elastic or inelastic. And I'm saying that if they improve their brand image, um, Consumers believe that there aren't any substitutes for the product. They're going to keep on buying that product, even if you put the price up. This would give the organisation the ability to raise prices and increase revenues, because consumers are going to keep on buying the product. There's no substitutes for it. Even if we put the price of the product up, uh, consumers are going to keep buying it. Well, why is that good? This is preferable to cutting prices in a competitive market as the price cuts may only lead to competitors following suit and the expected increase in sales revenue might not materialise. Okay, so this is a problem of having a price elastic product. Um, it's all very well saying if we cut prices, demand is going to increase, but if you're in a competitive market, which is the case study of the business, then what happens if your competitors follow suit? Do you still get that increase in sales or do you cut your price, start a price war, and then you don't gain any extra customers as a result? It's far preferable for an organization to have some control over their pricing policy through making that product price inelastic. And to do that, you need to make the product a necessity, make customers believe there's no substitute for it, and if you can do that, consumers will keep buying a product regardless of uh, inch increases in price or well, to a certain extent. They'll certainly be less responsive to changes in the price. Anyway, so these are my points about why it might be useful for a business in a competitive market to make marketing decisions. They can choose their pricing strategy and they make, can make decisions about how to promote their brand in order to make the product more price inelastic, which might be preferable to cutting prices in a competitive market. Okay, so now I need to get some uh, balance. Balanced range of issues in the question um, uh, is what I need to do to hit a level five response. So I've got my reasons it may be useful. Next, I've got a couple of paragraphs on why this figure might not be useful. Okay, so however, the figure is only an estimate of price elasticity of demand and may not be accurate. So I'm using the case study. This is in context, it's an estimate. I think they've used the word estimate twice in the question, so that's an important word to pick up on. It is not clear what data the estimate is based on and when it was collected. So this is my point here in yellow at the top of the paragraph. The green shows how I build my argument. So what would that mean? Well, it could be based on a small sample size or changes in the external environment may have occurred in the meantime. For example, changes in income may, might 
might make consumers less responsive to changes in price. All right, if everyone's income has gone up and you're thinking that your price elasticity of demand, you know, it's an elastic product, well, maybe if consumers are a bit richer, they're prepared to keep on buying a product. Maybe this data is old. Therefore, deciding the pricing policy for a product based on this data could lead to unexpected changes in demand when prices change, affecting estimates of demand and revenues. Okay, so I'm basically saying that the data is old, it might be based on a small sample size, or changes have occurred, all right? We need to question the data that we're given. Who's collected it? When was it collected, etc. Okay, so that's one problem with this estimate. A second problem um, is that PED gives an estimate of the impact of changes in price on demand and revenue, but the impact on profits is less clear. Now, what I'm going to say here is that price elasticity of demand, it estimates how much uh, quantity demanded changes, and from that you can do price times quantity, and you can work out how much revenue will change. But it can be more difficult to work out how profits will change overall. So I've illustrated that with an example. For example, assuming the 10% price cut does lead to a 12% increase in demand, would this result in the organisation achieving economies of scale and lower average costs of production? Or may some additional and unexpected costs occur that reduce the profit earned from such an increase in output? So for example, what's going to happen to my fixed costs? It's all very well saying if we cut the uh, price of this product by 10%, we're going to have to produce 12% more because demand will go up. But where are we going to store that? Is that going to increase our storage costs? Um, could it increase our transportation costs, etc.? And if it does, then it's all very well earning a 12% increase in revenue. But if costs increase as well, then um, or by more than 12%, then maybe it's not profitable. Arguably, this may be a financial decision rather than a marketing one, but it would certainly be an important consideration. So, I'm just the question is about marketing decisions. Are, is, is the impact on profits a financial one? Well, maybe, but uh, this is good knowledge that you can include um, in your answer. All right, price elasticity of demand is beneficial for telling you impacts on revenue, but it's less good for impacts on profit. Okay, so um, a good conclusion to a question uh, will answer the question clearly. It will support that answer. It will uh, identify a problem and then you could offer a solution to that problem. All right, this is a structure that I find will, find, will um, help to you to make a judgment, provide solutions, which are uh, show balance, okay? So the answer is the judgment, the support is, the, uh, is based on the analysis that you've done, the problem shows some balance, and the solution gives you uh, the solution that, that uh, it suggests there. So it's quite a good structure to hit all of those level five criteria. So what's my conclusion? In conclusion, this signifies the examiner I'm about to answer the question. Estimates of price elasticity of demand can be helpful in terms of setting an organisation's pricing strategy. That directly answers the question in making marketing decisions. Pricing strategy is a marketing decision. This is because an estimate of 1.2 shows that following a competitive pricing policy may lead to an increase in revenues. So I've mentioned that earlier on in my essay. I've used the case study to support uh, my answer. All right, the however implies that I'm getting a bit of balance in my conclusion. It's based on estimates and does not consider competitors' responses to the price cuts. So um, this is my problem, and now I'm gonna go into a solution. It may be more beneficial for an organisation to take steps to make demand for their product price inelastic. Well, how could they do that? Perhaps by improving the brand image and reducing the number of substitute goods, as they will then be able to increase the prices without needing to be concerned with the reaction of competitors in the market. So, um, hopefully uh, that was helpful for you in seeing how I make a point in the beginning of the essay in yellow, and then build the chain of argument in green um, using 
business terminology throughout my essay and then come to a clear conclusion. Um, I hope you found that helpful.